Welcome to Statistics. In this video, we're going to talk about scatter plots, a great way to represent the relationship between two quantitative variables. So, first off, you know, what is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a great and only way to explore relationships in bivariate data. Bivariate data? What is that, you may say? Well, bivariate data, um, a bivariate quantitative data set consists of observations of two different quantitative variables made on individuals in a sample or population. So bivariate data, prefix by bi means two. So we have a sample of people, whether it be a sample or maybe we have an entire population, and we measure them twice. We measure two different quantitative variables from each of the individuals. So a simple example could be got 30 men and we're going to measure their height and their weight. So we have 30 men and from each men, we're going to collect two quantitative data. That's bivariate data. It's bivariate because there's two of them and they're all from the same individuals. Now, a scatter plot does show the bivariate data. It's a great way to show the bivariate data. So a scatter plot shows the two numerical values for each observation, one corresponding to the value on the X and the other corresponding to the value on the Y. So for example, this, this right here could be one of our men and maybe we have his height down here as the X variable. So that would be the, that one man's uh, height. And this over here, his corresponding Y variable would be that man's weight. So again, notice that they're points. And on an X, Y coordinate grid, every point has two things, an X and a Y. So in this particular example, that'd be a height and a weight. And then this right here would be a second man. And we would have his height, so he's obviously a little shorter. And his weight, he's obviously a little bit, weighs less as well. Here, here's a, another man. This man is, is somewhere in between their two heights, and he's also in between their two weights. Okay, you get it. So again, very great way, very great way to show the bivariate data in a scatter plot. Keep in mind, don't ever connect the dots. We do not connect the dots in a scatter plot. All right, so a big question that you might have had just in that previous uh, slide there was what variable is the X and which variable is the Y? Like, how do I know? Well, an explanatory variable is a variable whose values are used to explain or predict corresponding values of the response variable. So this is actually really cool. The explanatory is the X variable. The X, I mean, come on, explanatory, X variable. So the explanatory variable is the one that's doing the predicting or doing the explaining that's causing a response in the Y variable. So the Y variable is the response variable because that's the variable that changes. Now listen, in most problems, it's very clear. Oh, that's explaining the response. That's the X, that's the Y. In most problems, it will be very clear, but I will have to admit in some problems, it's unclear. Like in the previous problem I just did, how do I know the, the height is explaining the weight? Maybe the weight explains the height. But if you actually think about it, it makes more sense that if you're taller, you weigh more. If you're shorter, you weigh less. Not us is necessarily true for everybody, but that makes more sense. It's not like, oh, that person's heavy, must be tall. You know what I mean? Like it just, you know, so, so sometimes you do have to think about it, but keep in mind, listen, at the end of the day, if I give you a scatter plot, I know every one of you knows an X axis versus a Y axis. So which one's the explanatory? Look at the X axis. Which one's the response variable? Look at the Y axis. It doesn't get much harder. In fact, here's an example. An ice cream store looked at 12 days. Every day they measured the temperature for that day, the max temperature on that day. And they also measured the amount of money they made selling ice cream. So for example, this dot right here is one day where the max temperature was maybe just under 12 degrees Celsius. And on that day, they sold maybe like $195 worth of ice cream. On this day right here, the temperature was right around, max temperature right around 22 degrees Celsius. And they sold maybe $520 that particular day. So again, which is the explanatory variable? Well, I, I don't care what you think or what you don't think. It's on the x-axis, so there is temperature. That's the explanatory variable. The sales is the response variable, and it actually makes sense. If it's hotter outside, you might sell more ice cream. Oh, come on. It's the temperature that's explaining why my sales are higher on hot days, lower on cold days. So pretty easy to see which is the explanatory and which is the response in a scatter plot. But keep in mind, every one of those dots has two quantitative variables measured about it, and that's why it's called bivariate data. All right, now anytime we look at a scatter plot, just like we look at any other graph in this class, we want to be able to describe it, analyze it. 
So the main thing we want to do when we analyze the scatter plot is look for relationships between the two variables, the explanatory and the response. Like in the last one, hey, I said, hey, uh, notice that, uh, you know, hotter days, more ice cream sales, colder days, less ice cream. Like I noticed a relationship. Now, you are also going to always be asked to describe what you see in a scatter plot. And when you describe a scatter plot, you want to, your description wants to include form, direction, strength, and any unusual features. So once again, here is my scatter plot with temperature and ice cream sales. So the first thing I realized is, wow, there does appear to be a relationship. And now what I want to do is I want to talk about the direction. I want to talk about the form. I want to talk about any unusual features. And I want to talk about the strength. So before we do that with this graph, let's talk about what each of those things actually is. So first off, direction is actually the easiest. It's simply positive or negative. A positive association means as your X goes up, so does your Y. A negative relationship means as the X goes up, the Y goes down. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. Positive up, negative down. So if we go back and take a look at this graph, I hope everybody says positive. As temperature goes up, sales go up as well. X goes up, Y goes up. Explanatory goes up, response goes up. That's going to be positive. All right, then we got form. The form of the association shown in a scatter plot, if any, sometimes you might not have any form, can be described as either linear or nonlinear. So to be honest, when we talk about form, we, we talk about no form, okay? And I'll show you what that means here in a little bit. And then we talk about linear. Uh, linear means it makes a line. Can't spell linear without line. So if you see your dots forming even a loose line, you would call it linear. It does not have to be a perfectly straight line. And then anything else would be considered nonlinear. Nonlinear would be like a, a exponential curve or a parabola maybe, but a curve would be nonlinear. So we either say there's no form, there's a linear form, or there is simply that's nonlinear, which would basically be a curve. So if we go back here, we'd say, what's my form? Well, I mean, it's not a perfect straight line, but, you know, it actually does look pretty good. Like I, I do kind of see a, a, a line forming here, right? That's definitely going to be a linear form for sure. Then we got strength. The strength of an association is how closely the individual points follow a specific pattern. For example, if you agree that it's linear and you're like, yeah, it's really linear because they really form a nice, nice, pretty straight line, well, then that's going to be very strong. If you look at a graph and you're like, okay, I think it's linear, but it's not, it's like really loose. Like the points aren't extremely connected. They're not, they're not really closely forming a pattern. I, I think it's linear. Well, then you're probably more towards the weak side. So right now, we're going to describe strength as either strong, moderate, or weak. Strong means like the pattern that you see, the form you see is very clear. Whereas moderate, it's like, eh, it's, it's not very clear, but I kind of see a form versus weak. So, you know, this would be a very strong linear relationship. I mean, very strong, definitely forming a line. This would probably be more like moderate, like, um, okay, like, you know, I see a line, but it's not nice and tight, right? And that would be more moderate, where weak would be like, um, uh, geez, I think it's, I think there's a line. Maybe not, though. Boy, that, that looks like maybe there's no form. And yeah, that's an example of no form. Like, it's not curved. It's not a line. It's just like a scatter of bees. That would be no form, and that's going to have a very weak strength. Then we have unusual features. So, um, you know, the strength of association is how close the individual points fall. Oh, that's the same thing. I didn't mean for that. That's not unusual features. That should say something else there. Hold on a second. All right, this is what I meant to say for unusual features. So unusual features of a scatter plot include clusters of points or points with relatively large discrepancies between the value of the response and a predicted value for the response variable. So, um, you know, this would be something like this. Like if you see like, hey, a bunch of really nice points that are nice and strong, linear, positive, but then you see this one point that just doesn't fit the pattern. That would definitely be unusual. Or maybe you see like a whole pattern here and then another pattern here. So somebody might look at this and be like, oh yeah, that's linear. I see that it's, it's moving in a positive direction. Yeah, but if you break the graph in half, you see that this has no form and this has no form. So that'd be where we more of like two clusters. That would definitely be an unusual feature. So those are some different things that you could see in a graph as well. Typically, in this class, we're not going to show you any of these things, but you never know. But if you do see something unusual or weird, you definitely want to point it out. Uh, let's look at a couple just kind of like basic, non, you know, just generic graphs here. And let's talk about what we see here. So this first one is going to be positive. It's going to be very strong and linear. Okay. Here we also see positive. 
linear, but it's not like the greatest line. So that might be more moderate strength. Here we would say, listen, this is very weak. There's no form. I mean, maybe it's, it's, it's kind of positive. Like, I mean, I mean, kind of, but gosh, it's so, so weak that I could barely see the direction. So that's kind of the point of why it's so weak. This would definitely be negative. And I would say that that's moderate to strong. I mean, you could even use adjectives like kind of strong or somewhat strong, but it's definitely negative, And I would definitely say linear, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the greatest strength. This one right here would be very strong. Oh, not positive. This would be negative. Very, very, very strong here. Those points are really coming together to form that line. And this graph right here, I, I would actually say it has a nonlinear form because I see that it goes down and then it goes up. So that would be something unusual to talk about. This would have a like, I mean, the strength is like, okay, because I can kind of see that curve there, but it's definitely nonlinear. And this is where you might want to say, hey, listen, like, you know, from the beginning of the graph, you know, if, if I label this as A and this is B. So from A to B, it's going down, but then from B to C, it's going up. Like you could talk about that in terms of what you see when you describe the graph. So it's um, not linear. From A to B, it's going down. From B to C, it's going up. Strength is moderate because I could kind of see the relationship there, but it's not a very extremely strong one by any means. So, you know, that's it for understanding scatter plots and talking about them. Just make sure that, um, you know, you, you talk about what you see, right? Mention direction, positive, negative, form, linear, nonlinear, no form, and then strength, moderate, weak, or strong as well. Now, the other thing you always want to do when you, when you talk about this, so here I'm going to say positive, uh, linear, very strong, but then you also want to give a general statement. Hey, uh, as the temperature goes up, uh, the sales of ice cream goes up. So don't forget to always have that context in an answer on an exam, a test, a quiz, what have you. So again, what am I going to say about this graph? Positive, linear, very strong. And as the temperature goes up, so do my ice cream sales. All right, that's it for scatter plots. Hope you enjoyed it.